Looks right. like this room's up and ready. Um, yeah, we're already sharing, so good, excellent. Is that good? Can you see it? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, cool. I can't see how many people are in the room, but if you want me to start explaining, I can do that. or if you have any questions. Anissa? Hello. Hey. Hey. Good. You got the poster up that looks great. And then you know how to make it uh, larger or smaller if you need to, correct? Um. No. Should be a, a button off to the side. There's a plus or minus. Zoom in, zoom out. So off to the left hand side for me. Um, not on the oh, on your web apps. Yep. Okay. So I wouldn't, uh, you know. How do I go back? Okay, there. Yep. Okay. So I'd probably leave it like this for now, and then if somebody wants to ask you a specific question on a subsection, you can do that then, okay? Okay. Perfect. And Callie's in good shape, and Jillian, you know how to hand off from, from here, so I'll let you guys make that, and then I'm going to attend one of the other sessions here quick. So I will uh, circle back, all right? Okay. Thanks, Eric. Yep. Bye. All right. I guess I will just...
start. So um, my name is Anissa Tapper and I'm part of the high altitude moving team at St. Catherine University in St. Paul, Minnesota. And I work with two other people, Jillian Durand, who's in this room, and then Callie Korzanowski, who is in the other room doing uh, the stratospheric ballooning poster. So you can check that out afterwards. Um, so we are the only all women's research team in the country. So that gives us a unique opportunity um, and perspective, I think, to do things. And what we've mainly been doing this year is um, planning our eclipse trips for the annular eclipse in 2023 um, and then the total solar eclipse in 2024. Um, we plan on going to San Antonio, Texas in 2023 and we are looking for partners um, either there or who are willing to travel there to help us and same with um, the 2024 total solar eclipse in but we're going to Indianapolis, um, Indiana. Um, so we picked, there is another eclipse in 2021 and we possibly will be doing a flight on that day, but it's not set in stone yet. Um, but we have the background section, which explains, you know, what kind of, or what's the difference between the eclipse and like what happens during each of them. And then like the types of shadows that occur. And then the data table explains um, when certain periods begin and end, the location, um, time zone, and how long the maximum will last. And then the eclipse map section, which is my personal favorite, but we have the path map for each of them, 2023 on the left and then 2024 on the right. And then if you are able to, um, like the, the three in the middle, those ones are actually animated and you can, like if you put your phone up and do the QR code, you can see those. It'll take you to the website, which is very cool, I think. And the dots in the, um, the path maps, the two blue ones are, on San Antonio and Indianapolis are roughly there. Um, then the eclipse data explains like different periods of the eclipse. So when they start, when they end, like contact three is the um, totality for a total solar eclipse and maximum for the annular eclipse. Um, and then our objectives are what we plan on doing in the next few years. Um, like any, where we're going, any new instruments, um, just our plans really. And same with the 2023, 2024 sections, those to just highlight why we're going there and why we picked that location. And then the common instrumentation is our newer section. So it explains what we're gonna be using to conduct these experiments, what's going into the payloads. Um, and we're excited about the new silicon photomultipliers because we just got them like a month ago. Um, so they're very new, which is very exciting. And we haven't we haven't done any flights yet, so we're really looking forward to seeing how those will perform. Um, yeah, any questions? Hey, Anissa, this is Carl. Um, I just, I'm not sure what a silicon uh, photo multiplier is. Would you mind explaining that? Um, yes. And also in the, the stratospheric ballooning poster, um, which is the next room, we also have, it's the same team. So we have a part explaining that as well, but like I mainly worked on the Eclipse, so I don't know like terribly too much, but I can try to do as best as I can. So they are similar to the Geiger-Muller tubes in that they do particle detection. And they're a good alternative because the Geiger-Muller tubes are 
they're pretty big and like kind of heavy, but the silicon photo modifiers, I think they weigh like 30 grams. So it's a very big difference. We can have, um, we could even fly two if we wanted, but that's the main reason that we're switching. And they, they really just measure particle counts. Gotcha. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, this is uh, Jill Schmidt, and I have a question. I guess it's not a technical question, um, but I am a professor and I teach some ballooning courses at Missouri S&T, and we're interested in doing something uh, probably for the 2024 eclipse because it comes fairly close to our area. Um, as someone who's been on a team kind of planning for this, how has your oh. organized um, so that it can, you know, it's kind of a long project, right? Students come and they go and they graduate and they come in. How is your team organized and coordinated um, to kind of take on a longer project like this versus just something done in one or two years? Mm -hmm. um, it is nice because we kind of, you know, like right this year we planned, like, why are we going there? Um, we don't have exact locations yet because we're still looking for partners, but we definitely, we picked our locations and are set on that. We're set on like the projects that we're doing. So the next two years are going to be testing that, all the instrumentation. And then um, everyone on the team this year, it was our first, or it is our first year on the team. So we'll be here for a few more years so we can kind of get like literally everything prepared. Um, for these eclipses, which is nice. And then hopefully we get a lot more recruits and they're able to take it on. Otherwise, um, Eric does like to have alumni come back and help. And I know that the 2017 was a, eclipse was a really good one for a lot of alumni to come back. So hopefully we can do that. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm, thank you. I have another question if no one else is jumping in. So I was going to give someone else a chance, but no one seemed to speak up. Um, my other question for you is when you're running your test flights, since you just got these new sensors in, is there any particular condition you're looking to do those launches on? I know you, you won't get another eclipse right before the eclipse, um, but are there any specific things you're looking for for launch dates for that to try to, you know, test out any particular feature? Um. Yeah. So. Usually, um, the normal, like, nice weather and stuff, I assume sunny days. I haven't been on a flight, so I don't know, like, what the most perfect conditions are, but we were um, toying with the idea of doing, like, pre and post thunderstorm flights, which would be interesting. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to expand on that in the future, just because this eclipse stuff does take a lot of time. But mainly, what um, any like weather or like conditions that we were able to fly in in the past is what we want in the future. I hope that answered your question. Yep, thank you. I appreciate thank it. You. No. Anissa, any questions for me? Um, I just joined, so. Good so far? Yeah, good so far. All right. Sounds good. I'm going to check in with Callie too. So. Okay. Hey, Anissa, I have another question. How, uh, how did 
do you know what went into like the decision making between for your launch sites like why san antonio and india indianapolis versus somewhere else um yes i did a lot of research on that and we did um i don't remember the names of the companies but we want to do hydrogen lights so like the three the three big ones are down there they have locations that are either in san antonio or like less than 30 minutes away um both indianapolis and san antonio had they both have really good like cell tower coverage and they're not there aren't any national parks or bodies of water like any large bodies of water other than like your basic ponds near so they're pretty pretty flat um and then they have and then we did look into like every single university that was near there as well and they both have ones who have strong physics or engineering science departments um so we basically looked into those factors and oh also the path of the maximum path for each one is close to well in the table it's four minutes and 22 seconds for san antonio which is another reason because we get so much more time than if you were to go to um like colorado for that one because in colorado they were like three minutes sure so the, yeah the time was a big big thing for those um was was the interest in like have you done a, a hydrogen launch before um, I know Eric has, but I've never been on a flight because this is my first yeah. year. So, gotcha. Yeah. Do you mm -hmm. do you have any idea if the um, interest in hydrogen was necessitated, like just because of the shortage of helium, or if there was another reason for looking into it? Or no worries if not. I'm um, just curious too. We did look into that a little bit, and I do know that it is because of the shortage of helium and. I do believe hydrogen is cheaper. So yeah, yeah that was another factor. Um, yeah, we're, we're here in Montana and, uh, you know, for, for quite a while, it's been the case that only the hospitals really can get the mm -hmm. bigger tanks of helium. And so we still have to get ours from, from some partners that are able to get it. But uh, yeah, it's unfortunate that, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that that's the case, but hopefully a transition to hydrogen will be, you know, safe and, and cost effective, like you were saying. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Yeah. Um, and I, um, my, my supervisor, Jennifer Fowler, uh, was interested probably, um, I'm not sure. I haven't really seen her name crop up yet, but, uh, mm -hmm. we, we have plans for, um, submitting a proposal for some research efforts during these eclipses as well. And mm -hmm. so I'm sure I'm sure a discussion about, you know, uh, collaboration would be beneficial for us in the future as well. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, that's really cool that you are, you know, part of, uh, you know, such a um, it's unfortunate that it's taken as long as it has to have an all-female, you know, research group, but you must be really proud. Yeah, I was just um, emailing with my co-collaborators and we were just thinking about like how much work we put into this year and like how proud we are to do this. And it, it just made us really happy. So that's really nice. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh yeah, I, I know with with the tragic loss of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, what better mm -hmm. time to really feel feel proud of champion, championing something that, you know, you're you can feel so proud of. Yeah, that's awesome. Good for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, is it Anissa or is that how I say it? Anissa? Yeah, Anissa. Cool. Well, mm -hmm. thanks so much for for sharing. I uh, I'm also. Um, you know, just been getting into eclipses in the last number of years, and it's uh, it is a ton of fun. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm happy to you know come here and hear from people that are doing large and smaller payloads and see what the different interests are. But yeah, mm -hmm. you, yeah, I'm excited. What were you doing in 2017? Um, 2017, 
for that I eclipse. Know, yeah. I know that they did, I think, three flights at like 15 or 20 minute intervals um, during the eclipse. And I don't, I don't know for sure which, like if they use the personal neutron dissimilars or like the Geiger and Mueller tubes or just, you know, taking temperature and um, pressure readings. I'm pretty sure they did Geiger and Mueller tubes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and those are also just a, a particulate sensor. Is that right? They mm -hmm. they take in air, and then is it uh, one of the larger ones, or you have to uh, you, you have to recover it really quickly and and cap it off? Yeah, I think so. And do you have any idea what the what the preliminary findings are as far as differences because of the eclipse of uh, particulates? Is there an effect? Um, that's a good question. I, I would ask Eric about that because he was there and he knows all the data I I wouldn't know just because it was three years ago now. Sure. Yeah, no problem. Um, but I can I can ask him that. Seems like he's kind of bouncing between rooms, so I'll catch him next time me. Yeah. Were you able to see the eclipse in 2017? Um, I wasn't because it was my first day of community college and I couldn't really skip class. Um, totally. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But my dad, he drove down to Nebraska and he saw it. Cool. Yeah. I had some family in, uh, in like Driggs, Idaho was another place to, to view it. That was good. Mm -hmm. and I was, I was again here in Montana, but it was in August, of course. And uh, just like it is now, it was extremely smoky because of wildfires. Right. And so when the eclipse did happen, um, we were only, I think, at about 80 or 85 percent totality. So it wasn't super significant, but uh, but you could kind of see it, you know, happening. But it was even more kind of eerie because of all the smoke. It was like a red eclipse. It was a little bizarre. <laughs> That's kind of cool, though. Yeah, something unique. I mean, it's unfortunate mm -hmm. because of the smoke, I guess. But yeah. Well, that's great. I, I wish you the best of luck in uh, in the 2023 and 2024 eclipse efforts. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely.
Hi, Callie. Hello. Should I make you host? Yeah. Give me oh a my second. God. Hold on, I just I wanted to text uh, Jillian for a second to tell her that I was going to host for you then. Tell her that I'm going to go to the other one. Do I? Do I make you presenter? Maybe. Maybe. Sharing will end if you change your present. Okay. Maybe I can do it here. Assign privileges. Change role to host. There we go. Not considered host though. Oh, there we go. Now I'm okay. Wow, we're so good with technology. Oh my God, what is this? Okay, should I leave? Uh, stop sharing, and then I'll share uh the poster. So I need the other posters. Turn your camera on. Oh, give me a second. We good? Should I go to Julian's now? We can. Okay, bye. Bye. Thanks, Denisa. Hey, Callie. Hello. How's it going? Going good, I suppose. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Hey, so um, were you doing another poster presentation before on like a uh, um, stratospheric? It was the stratospheric uh, ballooning measurements. Uh huh. Um, so there's three of us right now. So we have like one person that's floating between the uh, two posters, and then uh, we're trying to switch off so then we can see the other stuff. That's sure. On. Right on. Um, so uh, I I guess I had asked this question, and I had gotten deferred to your stratospheric measurements poster, um, but I'm not really sure how to how to go view the other ones. I can't seem to find the links, but um, do you have any idea what if there's an effect of uh, particulates, like if your particulate sensors um, measure a difference during the eclipse versus not? Like, is there more count, do you mean, or? Yeah, like, um, uh, when Anissa was mentioning these Geiger Mueller tubes, uh, you know, versus a silicon photomultiplier for measuring particulates. Mm -hmm. I was just curious what the if there are differences. Um, and and if not, then, you know, what the interest in uh, in the particulate measurements during the eclipse is. Um, OK, so. I guess I'll start off first with the difference between the Geiger Mueller and the SIPMs. The SIPMs, they're uh, well, they're also able to count um, particulate. They're also able to uh, uh, they they know the difference between like different types of particulates. It's not just a count of um, things interacting. It'll also know like what type of particulates are interacting with. Um, and then as for if they're uh, like what the difference is for eclipses. Um, I do believe that there was uh, more interactions uh, with particulates during the eclipses, which was really interesting, um, especially during the, I think it was the total solar one too. Like there was some um, differences in just the annular one, but the total solar eclipses, that one, uh, just seem to have more particulates interaction overall, though we're not quite sure as of why yet. We're trying to figure that out as well. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, I hope that answered your question. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I didn't realize that there was a, an effect at that uh, at that level. Yeah. I don't know if you have any other questions. 
Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I was just going to say I'd love to uh, check out the poster. Do you? Where are you uh, accessing the links to look at the different presentations? Because um, I know that the main the main meeting link changed. I was aware of that, but uh, so uh, who is it that sent out the email? They is it? I wonder if I can look it up on my phone to quick see who it was that sent it out. But they had sent out a um, like Google spreadsheet, and it had the schedule of um, who was the presenting and at like a what time and stuff. And then you scrolled farther to the right, then they had the links, and you could. Just oh, I see. Um, I see. I see that now. Yes, thank you. I just hadn't in my email. I hadn't uh, scrolled far enough to the right. That's perfect. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah, no problem. And then you should be able to just copy paste like, and then. You can just go to them. Go check out your other images. I'm going to do that right now. Thanks again. Yeah, no problem. Hi, Eric. Hey, oh, you're on this one now. Okay. Yeah, I'm on this one now. All right. So uh let's see so i told anisa to go take a look at the other posters but it looks like uh uh you probably well yeah given the time frame i don't know that you're going to be able to rotate um yeah it's already 204 That's it's already 204 yeah so okay so you get the opportunity to cover this one for a little bit too so okay yeah sounds good well i will uh let you take any questions, and uh, I'm gonna get one other thing ready to go before the afternoon session here too. So it looks like uh, okay, looks like whatever. But uh, well, I guess looks like just you and I for quite. Yeah, we had somebody and then they logged in. Um, uh, good question so far on the other one, or did we get anybody? Or um, I had his last name it's like carl something he was asking about i think you popped in briefly at one moment and then popped back out he was uh, asking like the differences between the geiger Mueller tubes and then sibums and like why we kind of wanted to switch between the two of them uh because i think anisa had brought him up at one point and then uh she had left then uh, and then i took over so i was explaining to him like the Sipums they can detect like the differences between the particulate, like not just um, that count wise, they kind of like also know like what's actually interacting with them. Correct. So that is, yep. So it allows you to sort of, and it also allows you to get neutral. So I guess it's probably going to be too late for well, uh, anybody, but that's. Uh, he was going to go to the uh, other poster. So I suppose if he has any other questions, then he can. Yep. Go also ask with the other poster, but he, yeah, because he was very interested in that, and then he was having trouble trying to go over to other uh, posters. So I was trying to explain to him, like, you can go into like your emails and like scroll through, you can find the. Links. <laughs> yeah, I there's an artistry for getting the uh, into the different sessions. I I am doing much better this afternoon with posters. Now I've got a system I figured out that only makes sense to me. Um, but like this morning, it took me the whole, I was too that this morning, it, it took me the entire time just to get through, uh, you know, the, the four almost just to get, and now this afternoon I've gone in and out, you know, you know, at least twice on each of yours. And then I think I've gotten, uh, and at least, you know, one other time on the Montana one too. So it's been, uh, yeah, I've got a better system now. It, it's, uh, it's one of these things, I guess, the longer I'm here, I'm figuring out more, you know, shortcuts and how to do it better. So, um, yeah. I would definitely say the same thing. It was when we were trying to even get into like the first uh, morning video, like the opening, we were like, are we like in the right place? Like, are like, just, we we're just trying to like figure things out. And then it was even different with the posters. So I'm glad we, I think we've all figured it out. We're all good. So, and I think it's good that we are in the second session for, for posters. Cause I think some stuff, uh, you know, it's, it's getting ironed out a bit here. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I am going to scoot. I got to before the 215 session hits here. So I'm going to log out and then um, I would suggest probably, you know, at, at 210, probably, you know, if Jayla says go ahead and cut out, but I would definitely probably 
you know, no later than about 212, I would say, you know. Yeah. Um, whatever at that point. But looks again our guest, so that's good. So I will uh I will talk to you later. Yep, good luck on your uh meeting or speech, I suppose. Good. Thank you. Says uh more stuff we put up on YouTube than the better. So. Yeah, we're gonna sort of uh, need some quality stuff to put up. Okay. Yeah, the only mess up I did is when we had the panel, I was a little late. I like the background. From actually from one of my flights that I thought was going to be a total disaster, I uh, launched on a super cloudy day and it was like I almost decided to tell the whole team let's wave it off because it's so cloudy. But uh, a friend of mine said, oh, no, sometimes you get good imagery on cloudy days. And this was a spectacular imagery that day with the layers of clouds. And... Wait, that's actually your picture. That's so cool. Oh, yeah, that's from one of my flights. So. Uh... Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it's like the money shot for the whole flight. So <laughs> it's a whole lot of pictures of clouds, but that, that was a really neat layer with the sun there. And No, but it's really cool, especially with like the glow over like. That's, yeah. The, wow. And, <laughs> and, so yeah, I have some that was climbing through the clouds so you can see like gaps in the clouds and they actually you see like a column from one layer of clouds to the other. It's really slick. It's really, really wow. neat pictures. Yeah, so I was surprised that I got so many good pictures because usually I'm in uh, New York State over the Finger Lakes, and usually we, uh, you know, we get the Finger Lakes down below us and Lake Ontario off in the distance if we're looking north, and that's sort of what I'm used to seeing. And it's like, well, I'm not going to get any of that. Is this going to be any good? But that looked pretty cool. And uh, I'm at Cornell University in some of our Earth and Atmospheric Sciences. Uh, one of our professor from from that department wanted to use this picture for some of their uh, <laughs> their publications too because he thought that looks so cool. <laughs> What type of camera would you use though if you're going like that high up and everything? I choose it. I used um for for my payloads. I since I, I'm paying for everything out of my own pocket, I just bought cheapy Kodak snapshot cameras, and I literally uh, hacked them open and and uh, soldered some wires onto the shutter connections and hooked them up to my Arduino so that the Arduino could take snapshots. And I just had it timing taking snapshots like every. 30 seconds for every minute, depending. I, I vary depending on altitude, how often I'm taking pictures to, uh, you know, during the boring parts of the flight, take a picture once a minute. Near Apogee, trying to take a picture like every 10 seconds, because there's a lot of cool stuff to see. Yeah. And That's for cool. every, you know, 10 pictures, one's decent and the other ones are crappy. So take a lot when you have a chance. So. That's what happens when you do photography as it is. <laughs> yeah. So. Wow, that's actually really cool though that like, because I suppose really expensive cameras, you have to be careful then. Otherwise, if you're going to use those, if yeah, I use those, and there's some like 40, and and I've switched now um, because doing surgery on those cameras is kind of dicey. Um, there's like forty dollar action cams you can buy from off Amazon that uh, you know if you put an external battery pack on it, you can just hit record in video mode and let it run the whole flight, and it works just fine. So I'm usually flying with two or three of those cameras now, just in the payload box, uh, the whole side, and have them peeking out the payload box. That's really cool. So I got the a lot of densely packed information on your poster here, but I got the one thing I was very interested in. That I was wondering when a solar eclipse would be over New York State. I couldn't remember when the next one was, and from your figure two there, it looks like it's in 2024. It turns out, Kelly, you might not know this, but there is a solar eclipse coming right over the Twin Cities. What? It's in twenty. It's in twenty ninety nine. Mm -hmm. um, Carlton has already uh, declared that they're going to take the day off from school so people can watch it. Yeah, I don't you think I'll be there. You, you might want to talk talk to your administration about very far reaching, very far forward looking. We should take the day off in twenty ninety nine. Alive at that point. Oh God. <laughs> I think I have a doctor's appointment that day. Yeah. <laughs> I had a friend who was really looking forward to the 2017 eclipse, and then she go got called for jury duty. literally oh, no. jury oh, duty. No. Oh no! So, so <laughs> let her step outside, but she wasn't allowed to travel. So basically, she stepped outside in Ames, Iowa, and she wanted to travel into the path of totality, but she wasn't allowed to leave town. Oh, that's oh, so Oh, 
A lot of people launched the, the Eclipse a couple of years ago, so uh, I imagine this this one coming up in 2024 is going to be another popular balloon time. I remember looking on uh, the the Hab Hub site at all the flights that were in the air the day of the Eclipse, and it was just you know the coast was or the uh, the U.S. was just peppered with balloon flights right along the uh, the center of the Eclipse line. It was really cool. Hmm. Yeah, so the, the next talk, which starts maybe in three minutes, will be about a big proposal to get another 70 teams or so out doing Eclipse ballooning by Randy Larimer. They don't have the money for it yet, though. Um, here's a question, Callie, do you know the incoming freshmen this year will be seniors when these Eclipses come around? So that means that you and your entire team, hopefully, will have all graduated before this happens. Are Is Eric actively getting freshmen involved this year, freshmen. Uh, so uh, the girl that was on here before, Anissa, she actually uh, has a friend who is an incoming freshman who's already uh, interested and potentially uh, wanting to join. We've been trying to figure out a way though to possibly outreach to more uh, girls, which is kind of an issue right now since uh, how I found about uh, this program last year was they came to one of my classes and they talked out in front of us. So it's a little hard to do that now since we can't exactly meet up in person. So I would disagree, completely disagree. I would say it's even easier. You don't even have to leave your dorm room. Just talk to the class by whatever, however the class is running anyway. You just have to get the, permi the permission from the professor, of course. Well, that's what we're trying to figure out. We're trying to make up like a little spiel that we can then when we have classes, uh, be able to just give a brief, like, two to three minute spiel of uh, what high altitude ballooning is and some of the benefits of joining and, uh, like, how fun it is and stuff. So hopefully we can get some more people in. Uh, yeah. That's cool. Um, I'm going to jump back in the main room, though. I think the next presentations are about to start. Oh, are they about to start? Oh, geez, they are about to start. So I, I just had to comment on your your comment about women in in the, the team. I'm the advisor for the amateur radio club at Cornell, and right now about three quarters of our membership are women, which I just think is so awesome that they're all interested oh, wow. in stuff. Mostly engineers, physics, and engineers, and earth and atmospheric sciences. So that's really um, cool. Yeah, and I'm really stoked that this uh, is in 2024 because I thought it was 2025. So yeah, I can start working with the freshman new club members and we can definitely plan a balloon launch for that. So that'll be fun. Yeah. All right, well, cool. We better uh, get off to the main room, but uh, thanks for the presentation. Yeah, no problem. Hi, Anissa. Hi, Callie. <laughs> Did it go well? I think so. I hope it did. <laughs> okay, should we go back to the big one? Yeah, probably. Okay. I'm very interested in the stuff that's coming up. So. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, bye. Oh, bye for now. <laughs> I'll see you in the bigger meeting. Hi, right, Kelly. Uh, where, where is St. Catherine? Uh, it is in St. Paul, Minnesota. Okay. So do you uh, work with James Flotton? Uh, I work with uh, Eric Biggerson. Okay, great. Great. Because yeah. I plan to be involved to in the Eclipse uh, uh, event uh, from, I'll probably be launching from Ohio. Yeah. Oh, okay. A, a series of that's universities that have come All right. Well, together. good seeing you. I'm going to go over to the talk now. It's starting here. up again. Um, yeah, yeah, it's 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 along with teams from but uh, I, I'd like to work with you all on doing a, a balloon Maine, flight from Ohio. Minnesota. Oh, okay. Space grant, uh, I don't know if you have Eric's email or not, but I think that might be the best thing. I can text you. I'll text you my email address in the main meeting. Center. We're proposing a multi-year ballooning project, and our underlying goal of this is to broaden participation of STEM learners uh, by immersing the teams in a mission-like ballooning opportunity, very similar to what we did in 2017, um, but more focused on uh, science. Um, and it will engage the participants with subject matter experts in scientific designing, building, testing, flying, 
analyzing and then 